Hey guys, welcome back. In today's video I would like to take a look at these five uh, back converter modules from Banggood and if you follow my channel you might have seen uh, one or two videos about uh, the very cheap boost converter circuits or modules from Banggood and how lucky I am, or rather unlucky, as I bought 11 modules, three worked out of the box and from the rest I was only able to revive another three, so I can't recommend the boost converters. However, I thought it might be interesting to take a look at these uh, back converters as they also come from Banggood. So hopefully all of them work and that's really only an issue with their uh, very small boost converters. Now these things over here use the XL Semi XL 4005E1 um, IC. Now, this thing has everything integrated except for the inductor, capacitors and the diode, um, as well as the potentiometer over here. We do have a small uh, LED with a protection resistor, we do have some capacitors, bigger ones, smaller ones, uh, an inductor and a potentiometer. I won't go into detail about uh, how everything works in this uh, video, as I currently work on a video in which I try to uh, show and explain everything about uh, back converters and then boost converters and how you can cal calculate everything. Now for the task that I'm going to do today, uh, I'll attach some a couple wires, attach, um, get power from my bench power supply, use my electronics load and we'll see how they behave. Alright, I now attached uh, some uh, copper wires to all of the pads for power in, power out. Um, the initial test will just be the voltage through the multimeter. I will supply 30 volt to the buck converter and then we will just see what the output is and if it is adjustable or if this thing just destroys itself right away. Now let's turn it on and I supply uh, 30 volt as I said and we are at 9 volt, 9.3 a blue LED is lighting up now let's see clockwise and the, and the voltage goes up counterclockwise and the power uh, the voltage goes down um, that looks promising oh yeah and, and by the way before I completely forget that part. Um, the ratings for this thing is uh, the voltage input range uh, is from 4 to 38 volt DC. Voltage output is from 1.25 volt to 32 volt DC and this thing can handle up to 5 amp. Uh, the maximum power this can, uh, th the maximum power throughput is 50 watt without a heatsink and uh, 75 watt with appropriate heatsink for this uh, chip over here. Now, in the test uh, today, uh, once I uh, tested all the units that they actually work, we will test another one with my uh, electronics load and the maximum power that I will uh, use it for is uh, 30 watt. I don't like to go to the full 50 watt, although it's ready for 50 watt without a heatsink. Um, this is more like the power that I would use it for with heatsink. Uh, that's just my perf personal preference. And um, yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm not sure. Um, some of these XL Semi um, ICs do have internal uh, thermal shutdown, but I don't know if this one has it. So uh, that's the reason I'm not going to use it to its full 50 watt. The ones that do have internal uh, thermal shutdown you can but still it's uh, always a bit risky. Now the first one works, let's go for the next one. The next one also works and if I now use a screwdriver to adjust the voltage, the voltage actually changes. That's very very good. All right next one works and I think the rest I'll just test off camera. Now this is very promising all of the DC to DC converter actually work so we do have five working units that's very good. Now the last one I will now 
a test with my electronics load and we'll see uh, what we can achieve also in efficiency and I have to maybe write the numbers down um, I need a pen or something uh, okay so um, I will supply 30 volt and again I won't go over uh, 30 watt of power without a heatsink but first let's turn it off we'll put a current limit in place oh no I need these cables um, let me think let's go for 30 stepping down from 30 volt to 25 volt 30 to 25 yeah so we need current limit of 1.5 amp the current limit has to be a slight a slight a bit higher than needed uh, to account for uh, losses and everything not losses what am I talking about um, to account for so essentially if if um, I reach the current limit my power supply starts to uh, do uh, get the voltage down so uh, to account for that now let's see what this thing can do um, let's turn it on first so we are at 30 volt let's go for um, 25 volt let's turn on the electronics load this is now drawing now we are at 10 watt let's go for 20 watt 30 watt of power let me just note this down we are at 31.2 watt from the power supply side and here we have 24.6 yeah let's say 6 volt at 1.12 amp all right now let's change the output voltage for now start to draw some current we are again at 31.2 watt power supply power supply and we are at 14.6 volt at 1.84 amp the voltage dropped um, let me just try to get the voltage back up no it uh, yeah slowly not really 15 volts okay now let's see uh, the power from the power supply is slightly higher so I have to go down Okay, that's 30 mm, a bit further up 31.2 watt again we are now at 14.9 volt to 1.8 amp so we are now at a 15 volt input output differential and I think uh, pushing it further uh, would be a bit much let's see oh that's too hot that's way too hot all right uh, ouch let's see uh, temperature I think that's a bit too much I do know a few of these Excel semi chips and I'm not sure but I think they're fine at 75 degrees Celsius 53 that's not as yeah okay so it gets a bit hotter in this region 56 58 yeah yeah so there was 59 somewhere the spot I hit with my finger was if I'd say it was 60 degrees Celsius uh, yeah very 59.8 yeah that's essentially it so yeah so the chip is very hot right now it's still fine without the heatsink but we are just pushing 30 watt through it um, 
50 watt without a heatsink. I wouldn't do that. That's a bit much for the small chip over here. Uh, with a heatsink, I would be more comfortable um, having this uh, thing running. Now, let's stop the test. I'll have to run my electronics load a bit uh, longer as it has to cool down. Alright, I've rewritten this uh, piece of paper over here so it's a bit more um, understandable. At both tests I uh, ran 31.2 watt out of my bench power supply so this uh, did work actually. In the first test the uh, electronics load displayed 24.6 volt at 1.12 amp of current. Uh, in this test I did not uh, have a problem with voltage display or current display so uh, no problem there and it uh, therefore consumed 27.55 watt. So we approximately lost 3.65 watt of power. And now this is the power loss through all the cabling and also this small chip over here which makes uh, the um, which makes it 88.3% efficient with a um, input output differential of 5.4 volts DC. For the second test, again, the power supply delivered 31.2 watt. We had 14.9 uh, volt at 1.8 amp displayed on the electronics load, which means it consumed 28.82 watt of power. We lost 4.38 watt of power uh, through cabling and uh, a primarily chip. The difference between this power loss and this power loss is only within a chip. The cables are not affected. The cables lose the same power within both tests approximately the same power because uh, they are very thick so um, most power loss gain is to be expected within the circuit or the chip. Um, the second test then made, made it 80 to 85.96% efficiency with an input output differential of 15.1 volts. So this over here is really really efficient, uh, much more efficient than the boost converters are and much more capable. Now in the, the test with the high input output differential of 15 volt DC we still had 85.96% efficiency which means um, we actually could step down even further or use a higher current at the same voltage without a problem. So I can finally recommend one of these very cheap DC to DC converters from Banggood. Um, the boost converters are garbage and these ones perfect. Very good efficiency and uh, very capable. Only thing again you have to keep in mind is don't go to the maximum power and if you go let's say beyond 40 watt use a heatsink. So I hope you liked this video and if you did please leave a like, comment down below and other than that thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye! Oh yeah, and before I forget it, uh, I'll put a product link into the video description, so if you need one of these, uh, go ahead and use the link, as this also uh, supports the channel.